What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. Today we are taping the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District at the Lincoln Building, home of Cascade Media Group. Today's special guest needs no special introduction. He is the mayor of Kansas City, Mr. Sly James. Welcome to What's Up Kansas City again. How you doing, Glenn? I'm doing fine. Good. We want to start talking about the recent developments with KCI Terminal. Okay. After almost a year of meeting, hearing testimony, and deliberating, the mayor's KCI advisory board recommended that Kansas City move ahead with a plan to rebuild Kansas City International Airport as a single terminal facility. That plan cost $1.2 billion. Mayor James, some said the airport about the airport, we are better served to maintain the convenience and accessibility of the current design of our airport. Tell me, is this true or false? Well, there's, there's a couple of statements I want to correct. First of all, uh, the advisory panel can only make a recommendation, so no decision has been made. Secondly, the $1.2 billion, that was another life, another thing. It has nothing to do with this at this point. Uh, what will happen now is that the airlines, the aviation department, and the city will collaborate to determine what the airlines think because the fees and the expenses and the licensing agreements, etc., that they will be part of will form the basis of how much we're able to afford. The good thing about the advisory committee was is that the advisory committee did something that most people don't have the opportunity to do. They spent a year looking at the facts looking and the facts. data. And after spending that year looking at the facts and the data and recognizing the basic 26 or so points that have to be in any functioning airport and looking at that and saying, on these 26 points, or these points, I'm not sure if it was exactly 26, which is better, do nothing, uh, a vast renovation, or new? And 23 to 1, I think, mm -hmm. said new. Um, so the bottom line is, is that when you're looking at an asset like an airport, convenience is extremely important, but it certainly can't be the only thing. There are a lot of issues with the airport that have to be addressed, and that group at least thought the best way to do it was a new terminal. The other thing I'll tell you is, is that we have a three-terminal airport in which only one-and-a-half terminals are functioning. Mm -hmm. That is the essence of inefficiency. Number two, recognizing again how much local people like the airport, the bottom line has to also be if it's that great, why haven't a whole bunch of other people built airports like okay. this one? And they haven't. Well, Mayor James, there were some voices that said there was no need for a new airport. It's, it was not a hazardous situation. Uh, it was not a necessity for a new design. What about those voices? Well, those voices are certainly valid and to the extent that they have any information on one which to base it. If it's simply a raw opinion based on somebody who gets out of a car and walks into the airport, I'd say that you need a little more information than that. This is not as simple as as it looks. The mere fact that it's convenient doesn't mean that it's functional. And it's not as functional as an airport needs to be. There are a lot of issues with that airport. It would be extremely difficult to knock down the huge concrete walls and expand it and do other things. So here's what's going to happen. What's going to happen is, is that there will be an analysis. What would it cost to do the renovations that would make this a more functional airport? And then what would it cost to build a new single terminal? And that differential may form the basis of what happens. KC Advisory Board, who is this a victory for the decision? I'm not sure it's a victory for anybody. What it's a victory for is a victory for facts and data as opposed to unenlightened opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. That doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about. And what we needed was somebody who would dig into the facts and the data and say, based on evidence, things that really do count, what should we do? And all the facts were there at the time of the decision. Can you tell us what, were, what was city council's role in uh, helping to uh, navigate, not navigate the process, what was city council's role in the decision? None. None. City council had nothing to do with it. The plan, uh, you corrected me, I said the plan cost $1.2 billion, however we're still determining the cost, mm -hmm. um, there are evaluations being made. We do know that the Kaufman Center, the original cost estimates for that project went up considerably. How will this airline proposal uh, generally affect the pocketbook of everyday Kansas Cityans? Will some people be asked to pay more than others? Well, first of all, you, you know, bad comparison with the Kaufman Center, Kaufman Center was all private money. 
The only public money that went into the Kaufman Center was the garage. Everything else at the Kaufman Center was private money. So this is not private money, this particular project? What, the airport? Yes. The airport is airport money. It's federal money. It's totally different things. You're, you know, that's a comparison that doesn't really match. Kaufman Center was by philanthropists and people donating money to build the best performing arts center in the world. The only public money was the garage. In the airport, there is no public money from the average ordinary citizen. The only money that goes into the airport will be from ticket fees, so if you don't buy a ticket, you don't pay anything. Parking fees, if you don't go there and park, you don't pay anything. Uh, vending uh, fees or taxes, whatever, inside the airport. If you don't go there, you don't eat, you don't buy anything, you don't pay anything. And airline uh, fees that they pay, and if you're not in the airport, then you don't pay anything. So, the and this is around the entire country. Everybody that buys a ticket in this country pays into that pool. We do, and then Indianapolis needs an airport, then the federal government, the Indianapolis people, and the airlines get together and they take money out of that pool to help build that airport. So if you're not flying, you're not paying. So it's a totally different thing here, and particularly with Kaufman, because Kaufman's all private. No tax dollars here. Very well. If you don't mind, let's take a break from the uh, the airline proposal okay. and talk about Club KC. Okay. You know that registration is ongoing for Club KC. I hope so. <laughs> what other services are the city offering to keep the youth busy this summer? What do you hope to accomplish by offering these programs to our youth? Well, we're trying to do our share of making sure that individual youth uh, and and kids that want to hang out have a safe place to go do that and have something to do when they get there. Club KC was originally designed by uh, young people who came together uh, to help us solve this problem. We asked them what they wanted and this is what they came up with to some extent. Um, we've also offer uh, for the first time this year an arts component in conjunction with the Nelson Gallery Arts KC and um, um, with the library. So we're offering an expanded version of what we've offered in the past. We still offer night hoops, night kicks, night nets uh, for kids to play soccer, volleyball, and basketball, and Club KC. Uh, we've expanded Club KC both in terms of the amount of time that we're open from uh, eight weeks to, uh, to ten, uh, we've expanded the locations from uh, the original three to five and maybe six, um, and we've expanded the programming. Uh, but once again, uh, the city is not the only party that should be involved in this. No, sir. The city plays a role. We spent, uh, we're spending about a half million dollars this year uh, to provide the services that we're providing. We need others to step up. We also have Bright Futures, which is our jobs program, an intern pro internship program, in which the city hires about a hundred kids to work during the summer. When do those kids be working in your office? They always do. I haven't seen any yet, but yes, we always have interns in our office. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and will again this year. Um, I'm not sure how many, two, three, something in that neighborhood. And the council has people and every other department in the city will have people as well. And a few will be placed with private businesses who have stepped up. And we've asked private business to either make monetary donations or hire interns themselves. That sounds real good. Let's talk a little bit about visiting the plaza. What will and will not be tolerated? How should youth, young adults, and older, the general public, in general, how should we conduct ourselves when visiting this um, shopping center, any shopping center? Well, I, I think that we all kind of have a sense of what's appropriate and what's not. It's not appropriate to sit on the fence uh, outside an outside restaurant uh, within two or three feet of people having dinner, talk loud, play your music, smoke cigarettes, and cuss. That's not appropriate behavior for anybody. Those not types at of, home, not shopping. Not at certain. home, not out and shopping, nothing. You should be respectful of people and what they're doing. Uh, you should not impede them walking down the street. You know, there are some times when we have a bunch of kids together who either thoughtlessly or intentionally block the path and make people go around them. Those types of things are antagonistic. Share the space as if you wanted people to share the space with you. If you want to be treated with respect, 
act respectful. If you want to be treated kindly, be kind. If you don't want people to be afraid, then don't act like you're scary. Um, do not put yourself and drivers in danger by playing the game of running between cars on the plaza to see if you can beat the next car coming down the street. Somebody wow, will get hit and hurt. Dangerous. That sounds real. And risky. there and there are some kids that are doing it. And 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 the cops stop them, talk to them, send them back. And I've been there and I've watched it happen. I saw one of the times that I was down there. I saw four kids sitting on the curb. Uh, with the mounted police and I went over and talked. The police said that they were darting in and out of traffic and they stopped them, they sat them down, they were going to let them go after they told them what, what they could and sh shouldn't do. Uh, an hour later I saw the same kids doing it in a different part of the plaza. Those are the types of things that cause problems. Also, I'm not sure, not really sure why an unescorted 13-year-old girl, 12-year-old boy, should be on the plaza. I'm not sure why a 14-year-old boy should be arrested with a Glock in his pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, why does a 14-year-old have a gun on the plaza? Mm -hmm. My guess is it's not going to end well. Those are the types of things to bring you into conflict with the police, etc. In short, act like you care. You know, act like you were raised. And we all know right from wrong. We all know what we should and shouldn't do. Basic rule of thumb. If you wouldn't do it in front of your mom, your dad, your principal, your teacher, your, your, your minister, don't do it on the plaza. Right. It's right. just that simple. Right. Right. No need for apologies if you are conscious about your behavior ahead of time. And, and let's, one other thing. Kids have a right to be there. They have a right to hang out. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. They do not have a right to disturb the peace or break the law. And if that happens, and talking to Chief Forte, they will enforce the law. They will try to give a break when they can, but they will enforce the law. We don't need nice fights in the park. We don't need fist fights in the middle of the street. And we don't need people just making life for everybody else uncomfortable. Cascade Media, Mayor James, part of our slogan is the Internet is the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. Cascade is that future, and the future is now. Can you tell us how communication and social media has played or will play a definite role in how we reach out and communicate with each other? Well, you know, we are a pretty social media savvy office. So in fact, uh, we've been uh, called the, uh, in the top five of social media governmental offices in the country. We use it extensively uh, with Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, uh, we communicate uh, daily, hourly on issues. Uh, we use it for snow uh, removal and contacting people about snow and what they should and shouldn't do, where things are going, what's going on. Uh, we use it very extensively and, and it's, it's just one more form of communication and communication is very important in what we do. Mayor James, you were working with St. Louis Mayor Francis Slade to stand in opposition to a GOP gun bill. What is that particular bill, and are you two still working together to oppose it? Yes, we are working together to oppose it, and it was House Bill 1493. Uh, that bill uh, basically uh, made it illegal for federal agents to enforce federal gun laws in the state of Missouri. Uh, and thereby, and also made it, and in one bill, one version of the bill, made it a, uh, a, uh, a criminal offense for which they could be arrested and fined. Uh, this bill doesn't make it a criminal offense. It makes it a basis for a lawsuit. So a police officer with a federal agent uh, breaking up a domestic disturbance, if they take away the gun of the person who's involved in the domestic disturbance, the person could then sue the federal agent for taking away the gun and violating their Second Amendment rights. Wow. Uh, That's too we, savvy, huh? <laughs> it's a little bit insane. Mm. Um, it would harm our collaborations with the FBI and the ATF to take guns out of the hands of dangerous criminals and to put criminals who are perpetrating violence in our community in jail. Um, it would basically break up our collaborative efforts to, uh, uh, to reduce homicides in this city through KC Nova and other partnerships. In short, it is a bill that does nothing to protect the Second Amendment. 
There's nothing new that comes out of this. It does nothing to protect legitimate gun owners. If you're a legitimate gun owner and you're not doing anything, this doesn't add anything to it because you're not going to be coming into contact with the federal authorities anyhow mm -hmm. if you're a law-abiding sure. legitimate gun owner, so you get nothing. But it does help criminals, and it does help domestic abusers, and it does help people who sell and traffic in illegal guns, and it does help people who are running around the streets shooting up people and doing stupid stuff, and it does it for no legitimate reason. The two cities, St. Louis and Kansas City, are not the middle of Missouri. We're not Rolla. We're not a, a city of a hundred people. Uh, we don't, there's no real hunting that goes on on the plaza or at Zona Rosa except for the best bargain. Uh, you know, nobody is going out to Swope Park and looking for deer so that they can feed their family wow. or for sport. Wow. There is no reason to interfere with our relationship with our federal partners while we're trying to reduce crime in this city and somebody is trying to make a point about guns. You know, the only thing that seems to get any play in this state is guns and reducing taxes for corporations. So where, where are we with that bill? Is it, is it, it's going to pass. It's going to, mm. it's going to pass. It passed last year. Oh. Passed last year. Governor vetoed it. It survived the veto by one vote. Mm -hmm. So it's going to pass. The governor will veto it. And then my guess is it may survive the veto. It may uh, uh, override the veto. Well, you're on record that you do oppose it. Mayor James, many violent crimes took place during the first weekend of this month we are currently in, which is May. While we are not blaming our city officials, we would like to know where the city stands in regards to crime reductions, what innovative programs, policies, and procedures are you investigating? Well, you know, I think people need to understand that there are some things that I don't care who you are, you cannot control. You cannot control under the current scheme if I had my way, we could control it, but you cannot control under the current scheme some guy dragging his wife out of their house onto a street corner and shooting her in public. Police can't be there. Police can't be there for that. That's can't stop it. You can't control somebody sitting in their kitchen having an argument, pulling out a gun and blowing somebody away. Very interesting phenomenon. In the last five murders, I believe, maybe, maybe the last six murders, four of those victims have been women, okay? Usually that's a very low uh, situation. Um, we're above, we're running above the number of women murdered this year than we normally do. That's an interesting tale. Domestic violence, okay? Uh, people who are, uh, well, one s situation. Here's another thing you can't control. You got a 14-year-old in the back seat of a car. I'm, I'm a teenager in the back seat of a car with his buddy, playing with a gun they stole from a house. It goes off and kills the woman driving the car. Mm -hmm. Cops can't do much about that. What we can and what we would like to do is to stop the kid from getting the gun in the first place. Mm -hmm. But we can't do that. Mm -hmm. We have no authority to do anything with guns in this state. That is totally reserved by the state and their statutes. We can't interfere with that. The only law that we have on our books is you cannot discharge a gun in the city limits. Ooh, -hoo. but we can't. We can't tell who. We can't stop somebody from owning it. One of the other things about the bill right now, you have to be 21 to get a concealed carry license. The bill lowers that age to 19. Why 19? You know, 18, we know a lot of things are at 18, a lot of things are 21, why 19? So the way that I look at it is you cannot buy a beer. You're not mature enough to legally buy a beer, but you are mature enough to legally have a concealed weapon. Mm -hmm. Now, does that make any sense? I'd like to back up a little bit here. Um, I know we don't have too much more time, Mayor James, and I do not know particularly where your city, city council stands with you on this, although I'm pretty sure they will back you up. What can we do um, in, in regards to if we don't have social media, um, what, what, what can we do? Um, how can we be a part? How can we police ourselves? How can we uh, take care of our own? Our own there, has to be, there has to be cooperation with the police department. We know that people we know. We need to cooperate with the police department. You, well, if we see things going on, we need to you, speak up. You absolutely have to. Let's put it like this. 
we know that there is that a lot of the murders that happen in this town are retaliation for other things that have happened, murders that have happened. And when we know that those things are there and people are retaliating, then they know who they want to retaliate against. So rather than them going out and killing somebody for having killed somebody, they need to turn them in and let the system handle them. Without the cooperation of witnesses, crimes don't get solved as easily or as quickly. So if we know that there are people who are wrecking havoc on our community with violence and we let them stay out there so that we might at some point in time in the future take revenge on them, then we're contributing to the problem. You have to speak up. You have to have the guts to say we're not going to tolerate this in our communities anymore. If you're hurting our kids, if you're shooting your guns and doing things, you're breaking into our houses, we're turning your butt in. That would be a very nice thing to do. That's something everybody can do. Here's the good news. We're starting to see a little bit more of that. We're starting to see a lot more cooperation. A lot more hand-in-hand -hand stuff with the police department, in large part thanks to Chief Forte and building up that relationship in the community, building that credibility. When he says he's going to do something, it gets done. Those are important things. But the bottom line is, if people want a safe community, then they have to demand a safe community. They can't sit around and say it's all the police department's fault, it's all the city's fault, when they're sitting on knowledge about who's cr creating the problem and won't say. So we can't divide it out of, out of thin air. The other thing, too, is, is that we really have to engage our youth in some ways. Some of our youth have no mentors, nobody who's going to spend time with them to help them, to, to give them some guidance. And sometimes we need to be engaged in that at the earliest age so that they don't feel totally alone as they're trying to make it through the world. A lot of our kids don't have a whole lot. But when you don't have a whole lot of physical stuff and you don't have a whole lot of nurturing contact with an adult, then you really have nothing. And if that's the case, somebody's going to step up to fill that void. And the somebody that steps up is probably going to be somebody that you shouldn't. We got more people with PhDs from prison than we do with PhDs from college working with our youth. Wow, well, that is that is a uh, self-assessment that I that's excellent, Mayor James. I have a, several more questions sure, for you. Sure, go ahead. I'll be shorter. <laughs> Green initiatives. Green initiatives. Yeah. Anything new? Are you bringing anything back for Kansas City residents this summer, the Green Initiative? Uh, absolutely. We have, uh, uh, well, we've received a couple of awards, and one of the things that we're looking at right now, we're looking at expanding our, our, our green initiatives that we've developed inside City Hall. We're asking businesses to adopt those, and some already have. So you will see us pushing out a, uh, a program of sustainability, uh, utility capture, all of those things, and uh, the business community has responded greatly. We are also working to expand urban gardening and the water use. Uh, it's one of those things you don't often think about. You can plant a garden, but how are you going to get the water to it and how much is it going to cost? So we're working with urban gardening people on those types of issues. We're working with Boys Grow out on the old municipal farm to make sure that they have more of a permanent home. All of those things are going on and some more that I know I'm forgetting, but uh, we've got a lot going on in our sustainability programs inside City Hall. Uh, more buses being converted to natural gas, more vehicles being converted to natural gas, uh, more LED lighting in city buildings, etc. We'll stay tuned. Streetcar initiative, are we busy focusing on funding KCI terminal proposal? Who wants streetcar and how do we keep those funds? And I'm, maybe this is me being scary from being compromised. If we're okay. focused on airlines, do we have enough money for streetcars? Do we have enough money for commuter rail? You got you to remember now, money comes from different places. The money for the airlines is, comes from the airport. If you're not at the airport, you ain't spending a dime. Okay? Money for streetcar comes from the TDD, the Transportation Development District, that surrounds the area in which the uh, streetcar will be expanded. In that area, there will be a one cent sales tax. If you're within a third of a mile, or you know, within three blocks, I believe, on either side of the line, you will have a special property assessment. The reason for the uh, special assessment is, is that we know that the uh, buildings and businesses appreciate 
within that radius. So you're going to get more appreciation in your property, so you're going to be asked to pay an assessment to offset that. Uh, we also know from our downtown streetcar, uh, where it hasn't even run yet, that economic development follows, and we have three quarters of a billion dollars of new or renovation going on on the streetcar line downtown. Three quarters of a billion and there hasn't been a train run down a track yet. We have the first new hotel uh, in Kansas City being built without any incentives, right on the streetcar line. In fact, we have three small hotels being built right on the streetcar line, all because of the streetcar. We have 1,500 residential units that will open in Kansas City by the end of next year most on the streetcar line. We'll have another thousand the year after that open right on the streetcar line. Residential units popping up all over the places, eateries, all sorts of different things. We have tech uh, businesses moving in on the streetcar line and in the crossroads area. So yes, it's worth it. And that is a different funding mechanism than the airport, and they shouldn't be confused, two totally different things. And I'm a new taxpayer. Well, yeah, and, and that's understandable. It's our job to tell people that. And, and a lot of people say, well, why can't you use the money from the airport for schools? Because you can't use the money for the airport for anything that's not airport related. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So you can't fix water, you can't fix schools, nothing. If you either, if you either, you either use it for airport or nothing at all. All right? But we're still paying for other people's airports in this city because some of the money that we generate goes to build airports elsewhere. That's not nice to hear. Well, but it's the reality. It's the reality. We want it here. We want all the good money to come to Greater Kansas City. Then if we want all the good money to come to Greater Kansas City, then we have to kind of get beyond this, well, I don't want it to change. It's so convenient stuff. I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I don't disagree. You know, there's more to an airport than convenience. You know, if you want convenience, go to 7-Eleven. Go to 7-Eleven. Or Quick Trip. I don't want to be a... I know who's behind the camera. Yeah, it depends on where you are in the city, I guess. Republican National Convention in KC, where are we with this? Are we uh, we're, closer to a decision? No, we're not, we're not close to a decision yet. Uh, the decision on the, the ultimate decision will probably be made in August or September. Uh, we are still in the hunt. We're one of the six. We believe we'll survive the next cut. Uh, the next cut will be either to four or to three. We think we're in very good position to do what we want. Uh, it's all about raising the money. Again, it's raised money from private individuals. It is not taxpayer money, except we have, the city has made a, um, uh, has invested about 165000 into uh, the process of trying to go after it because it costs a lot of money to do that but the actual amount of money that we need to raise is about sixty million so compared to the sixty million we're raising privately hundred and sixty five thousand ain't much money at all uh... but we believe that we have a fantastic opportunity to be selected uh... we are expecting to be one of the ones selected for a site visit in uh... june of this year we hope um, and then it'll be 30 people or so from the RNC Site Selection Committee and uh, Convention Group who will come into town, spend a couple of days, and want to see just about everything. Our best hotel, our worst hotel, our closest hotel, our farthest hotel. They'll want to time how long it takes to get from the Sprint Arena to our farthest hotel. They'll want to make sure that we have hotels for their high uh, contributors and they will, another hotel for their high office people and a hotel for their nominee, all of those things. Where are they going to eat? What restaurants can they buy out? Um, where are they going to have parties? Nelson, uh, Negro Leagues, wherever. All right, all of those things come into play. And so we'll have that, we'll be on that stage doing our finest dress rehearsal when they come to town for the site visit. Mayor James, last time you were here we talked about Julie Holland and her appointment to Education Committee. Right. Talked very eloquently about that. Tell us a little bit about education, the results of this committee, um, and what what's going on. Just because it's summer doesn't mean we don't still have summer school and homework. Well, that's, that's absolutely true. Julie is uh, our office education advisor. She's full-time in our office. 
uh, her job is to help us put together a cogent policy that we can use to promote education in the city. Her job is also to pay attention to the legislation and the legislature that's going through that's affecting education and there's a bunch going through now. Uh, the transfer issue is still being debated, a uh, voucher issue where you could use tax money to send kids to private schools very controversial, all of those things. So basically, it would take money from public school education and put it in private schools. A lot of people have problems with that, uh, and, and I can understand why they do. Um, but our goal with Julie is to put together a cogent policy that we can promote. So we have some things that we're definitely on track with, and that's our third grade reading program, Turn to Page, um, and then also um, uh, creating a, an atmosphere in which um, uh, school leadership can be better well trained and, and learn how to be better leaders on the school site, uh, trying to find ways to attract the highest qualified teachers, um, and basically trying to find a way to create more um, in the city for kids to go to. For example, if if you call a quality seat, a, a seat where a child is going to get a world-class education, <clears throat> then what we're looking for, if you've only got a thousand, we want to have two thousand. If you got two thousand, we want four. If you got four, we want eight, ten. More quality seats. Why? Because the more quality seats you have, the more kids are sitting in quality seats getting the best education. And that's the fun part. The more kids that get the best education, the fewer that are going to be out shooting people up. A lot of media organizations, one more question, uh, Mayor James, are speaking about women's equality. Right. Recently you announced the Women's Empower Empowerment Initiative. Right. Where are you on that? Uh, we're going full, uh, full speed ahead. It's WE, Women's Empowerment, and we have partnerships with uh, the um, um, uh, Women's Foundation, Greater Kansas City Women's Foundation, UMKC Women's Organization, and um, uh, uh, the Civic Exchange, um, That's it. and uh, the exchange is working with us in order to um, help us with uh, women's uh, business issues and to help us find a way, uh, the, the foundation, Women's Foundation, is helping us with trying to make sure that we have women on boards and commissions in the city so that they can participate in the city in a more meaningful way. That's what we're after. It's going full speed ahead. It's been written up uh, in the Washington Post. We've had several cities outside of the state contact our office wanting to know how they can duplicate it. So it's growing, it's building. It's a very, I think, very... Um, uh, interesting and active uh, situation with the women in town. Uh, I'll be at a meeting tonight to talk about women's business issues along with Mayor Mark Holland. Uh, we're always out talking about it, promoting it, but the one thing that we're trying to do is to make sure that women, that we do everything we can to remove barriers from women getting into business, getting into city government, getting into politics, whatever the case may be. Now, um, this is kind of unrelated and off the record, but a great woman on the national scene is retiring this week. Uh, most know her on The View, ABC's program started in 1997, Barbara Walters. Last day on Friday, will you be tuning into that or sitting the VCR? I don't think so. Don't think so? No, no, I... I <laughs> not, not a Barbara Walters no, it's priority. Not, no, it's not a matter of it being a priority or, or anything else. I appreciate the fact that she's done a very good job of what she does over a long period of time. But, you know, our plate is a little bit full. I can't get to shows that I recorded three weeks, four weeks ago. Wow. You know, uh... I've got 55 recorded shows saved on my DVR. And I go in and I look at them at night and say, well, I might be able to knock one of them off, but while I'm doing that, another three are recording, so it doesn't really work out very well. It must be fascinating to be the mayor. We appreciate having you here today. Can you give us any final words? Uh, yeah, I will say this, and I will say that, you know, we need to deal with facts. And I understand that people have strong reactions to things. But, you know, I've seen a lot of people's minds change when somebody explains it to them and they say, oh, I didn't know that. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have thought that. I'm just saying reserve judgment on some things. 
we are going to move rapidly and aggressively with uh, streetcar expansion. Why? Because streetcar expansion will go east and west on, in this expansion and north and south. We want to develop east and west. This is one of those tools that we have to do it. In fact, the streetcar expansion going east and west by itself will be the biggest economic development and infrastructure thing that we've ever done on the east side in this city. So give us a shot. Support us. We're trying to do the right thing. One thing, and let me tell you about the streetcar that people don't know. Second biggest expense in any household budget is transportation. So if you're struggling with an old car that sucks gas and oil, that needs to be repaired, that you're driving around and putting gas into and hoping that it lasts another year, you're paying for all that. If you had access to a complete transportation system that would allow you to get from your home to where you want it to go, you could park that car 50% of the time, 100% of the time, save the money. That's what we're talking about. If you're a two-car family, you might be able to get by with one car. Save the money. On average, it costs people $7,000 to operate a car over the course of a year. Using public transportation, you could save $6,000 a year just by using public transportation and uh, uh, leaving your car parked on the garage. Cut down on your insurance costs, cut down on your, on your gas costs, cut down on your maintenance costs cut down on your car payments, the whole shtick. Very that's why we're doing it. That's why we're doing it, and that's why we think it's a good deal for everybody, despite the fact that, yes, we do have to pay for streetcar. Thank you, Mayor James. I'm the host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, the sky is the limit. Check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. Before I forget, the sky is the limit. Shoot high. If you aim for the moon and you miss, at the very least, and this is the truth, you would have landed among the moon. See you again next time. Tired of dealing with losing contractors? Then get with the winning team. For all of your full service residential, commercial, and remodeling needs, call 777 Construction at 816 349 1517 today.